Oh, this is good. I, I, I brought this up. I, you know, I, uh, I, I wanted to throw this one out here sort of at the end of that last video where the guys were talking about love. Uh, it, it's in the, the show with all the, with the, with the black guys and the women, the black women in the, in the audience. I, I really wish I remember the name of that show. Cause I keep using that as a reference all the time. But the, uh, the idea of like, who says, who says, you know, who's in love and who's not like guys, guys are t- men by large, by, by far are the ones who are the first ones to say, I love you first, uh, simply because they're motivated to do so. Most guys live in a state of sexual deficit. And if they can consolidate on a woman by saying that they're in love, they will. But I'm going to refer, I'm just going to read this to you. This is off of uh, Royce's, Royce's, R-O-I-S-S-Y. You can find this at hartiste.org. In fact, you know what? Let me just share the screen. Uh, This is a good one. This is at Hartiste. Throw that up there for you. I'm just going to read the first one off of this. Never say I love you first. Women want to. I maybe I'll read some other. <laughs> Never say I love you first. Women want to feel like they have to overcome obstacles to win a man's heart. They crave the challenge of capturing the interest of a man who has other women competing for his attention and eventually prevailing over his grudging reluctance to award his committed exclusivity. The man who gives his emotional world away too easily robs women of the satisfaction of earning his love. Though you may be in love with her, don't say it before she has said it. Show compassionate restraint for her need to struggle towards yin fulfillment, yin yang, yin fulfillment. Inspire her to take the leap for you, then she'll return the favor a thousandfold. This is why you don't say I love you first. Uh, and there was the other one. Where's the, um, don't play by her rules. Oh, this is a good one too. Uh, make her jealous. That's always good. Yeah. You shall make your mission and not your woman, your priority. Forget all of those romantic cliches of the leading man proclaiming his undying love for the woman who completes him. Despite what, uh, what, uh, whatever protestations to the contrary, women do not want to be the one or the center of a man's existence. They, in fact, want to subordinate themselves to a worthy, worthy, worthy man's life purpose to help him achieve that purpose with her feminine support and to follow the path he lays out. You must respect a woman's integrity and not lie to her that she is your everything. She is not your everything. And if she is, she will soon not be anymore. And then lastly, uh, don't play by her rules. If you allow a woman to play by the, to make the rules, she will resent you with a seething contempt. Even a rapist cannot inspire the strongest woman and the most strident feminist want to be led, uh, led by and submit to a more powerful man. Polarity is the core of a healthy, loving relationship. I'm going to read that again. Polarity is the core of a healthy, loving relationship, not 50-50 equal partnership. She does not want the prerogative to walk all over you with her capricious demands and mercurial moods. I love his language. Her emotions are a hurricane, her soul a saboteur. Think of yourself as a bulwark against her tempest. Remember what I said, you got to be the rock. When she grasps for the pillar uh, to steady herself against the whipping winds or yearns for authority, an authority figure to foil her worst instincts, it is you who has to be there, strong, solid, unshakable, and immovable. This is why you don't go with that vulnerability game. And that's what it is. And that's really what, what when, when it boils down to it, like, oh, man, you men aren't insecure for being vulnerable. No, yeah, they are insecure for, they're insecure for expressing that vulnerability. Men are going to be vulnerable. You're going you're gonna to feel like self-doubt. You're, you're going to get zeroed out as a guy. You'll probably get zero. I've been zeroed out. I am 55 years old. I've probably been zeroed out at least four or five, like majorly, probably about four or five times in my life and come back from all of them. And that's really the definition of a guy. And you know what? You don't get pat on back for it. Women don't care about your struggles. They wait at the finish line and they fuck the winners. And those winners aren't crying about their, their previous struggles. Because they're capable, they're competent. Vulnerability is a cue, is a sign of incompetence. That's why it's not you're your pussy. Every guy goes through like moments of doubt and moments of like failure and gets zeroed out. That doesn't make you a pussy. Talking about it 
like to your to your to your significant to your to your wife or your girlfriend. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. That's that's like the last thing women want to say because they look to you for long term security. They're with you at least in part, probably in a major part, because at some point along the way, you seemed like a pretty good bet for her long term security. And here you are saying, I don't know if I can take care of you. Like, and maybe you're not putting it into those words, but that's what her lizard brain, this brain right there, that's what the auto, that's what autopilot is picking up. <laughs> She's picking up what you're laying down. You don't want the lizard brain to, uh, to think that you're incompetent <laughs> because that's where all the rest of this starts emotions and then reason.